one of the conditions that MDs try to manage is high cholesterol. Um, that's been a big business lately with statin drugs. Uh, and I, I think in the last uh, six months to a year, as we're shooting this, uh, the recommendations have gone up for people that should be should be on statin drugs uh, to you know almost like half of the adult population. Your thoughts on on either of those drugs or surprised at the recommendations that keep going up, trying to get more people on these drugs? Well, again, uh, you know, it's a lack of perspective. It's a lack of information. For instance, if you were to go outside and measure the position of the sun in the sky at different times of the day over the course of a year, uh, you could predict reasonably and extremely accurately where the sun was going to be in the sky at any moment in time. And then you could also reasonably conclude that it's the sun that goes around the earth. Because look, that the sun is the sun that's moving. It rises in the east and sets in the west. And I can tell you at 3 o'clock central time on June 29th, that's exactly where it's going to be, and I'd be right. But because even though you had collected all of this data, if you did not know anything about gravity, if you left out the datum point of gravity, your conclusions that the Earth moves around the sun would be incorrect, even though you had amassed this gigantic amount of data. If you did not know or include into uh, your research gravity, you would not know that it's not the Earth, the, the sun that goes around the Earth, it's the other way around. So, depending on the perspective that a scientist brings to bear on, in this case, medical research, they can be easily led astray for lack of, you know, a perspective, a lack of a proper perspective. And this is how it is with cholesterol. I believe statin drugs are currently the second leading selling drug in the world, $25 billion, I think, a year. It's a massive amount of money that we spend on cholesterol-lowering medications. And in the time that we've been uh, fat-phobic, uh, statin drug crazy, uh, heart disease, the rates of heart disease have not really changed that much. Meanwhile, Alzheimer's has skyrocketed. Alzheimer's has risen from obscurity to become the sixth leading cause of death. And if you look at the incidence of occurrence of Alzheimer's disease, it parallels almost exactly the introduction of statin drugs to the market. 75% of the brain and central nervous system is made from cholesterol. All of your sex hormones are made from cholesterol. All of the walls of all of the trillions of the cells in your body are made from cholesterol. Cholesterol is so important to the human body that your body makes it. Your liver will make cholesterol if you don't have enough. That's how statin drugs work. They interrupt the process in the liver, which makes cholesterol. They interrupt your body's natural production of cholesterol by causing inflammation in the liver, which is why if you're taking a statin drug, you need to have your liver enzymes checked every six months to make sure you're not getting hepatitis from the statin drug. But back to the point, there's no relationship between cholesterol and heart disease. Let me say it again, there's no relationship between cholesterol and heart disease. There was a Russian doctor, his name is Ufi Ravenskov. Um, he did a meta-analysis of all of the research ever published on heart disease anywhere in the world and looked at all of it. And when, when you objectively look, without any pharmaceutical funding, when you objectively look at the data, the fact of the matter is there is no relationship between cholesterol and heart disease. It is not cholesterol it is not the presence of cholesterol in the body that causes cholesterol to accumulate in the arteries. Cholesterol is not the culprit. It's inflammation of the artery, which causes the body to lay down cholesterol as a bandage. This is our point of view. But if you drive cholesterol into the ditch with statin drugs, fat-free diets, and exercise, guess what happens? Your brain dries up. You get Alzheimer's. Your sex hormones dry up. If you're a man, you get erectile dysfunction. If you're a woman, you get hot flushes for five years instead of five months like your grandparents. There are only two prescription medications which I unequivocally across the board recommend all of my patients to stop taking immediately. Just flush them down the toilet. Statin drugs and any type of proton pump inhibitor or heartburn medicine. 
because these things will kill you. Again, there's no relationship between high cholesterol and heart disease. Quite frankly, you would be hard pressed to try to get high cholesterol. And if you ever do, in fact, have high cholesterol, which from our point of view is over 275. High cholesterol, as far as I'm concerned, is over 275 for total cholesterol. But even if you did have high cholesterol, the cholesterol itself is not the problem. It's like the check engine light on the dashboard. The little light on the dashboard is not the problem. The light is an indication that something else somewhere in the automobile is wrong. When your cholesterol level skyrockets, there's nothing inherently wrong with the cholesterol, but it means there's something else going on in the body that needs to be addressed. And again, because of a, a priori built-in research bias that the MDs are blind to, they completely overlook this notion that it's not the cholesterol that's the problem. You know, thinking that cholesterol is the problem is like you know, having somebody from Mars come to planet Earth, they don't know anything about anything, and they go around to houses that are on fires, and they see the bigger the fire, the more firemen. Therefore, they conclude that it's the firemen that caused the fire. It's a cockeyed way of, you know, looking at the data. And this is a big problem. There really is, in the final analysis, very rare cases of high cholesterol, and when those even do show up, it, again, it's not the cholesterol that's the problem. It's something else in the body making that happen. It's fascinating stuff.